Well, I'm trying to um, get some better sound on here. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but um, maybe it'll be at least better than the old one was. So in this section, we're just kind of still sort of reviewing stuff. An ordered pair um, goes in the form of x, y, and what we're going to be doing is plugging in values and finding ordered pairs and then graphing them and taking a look what they look like. So when I look at a problem like this, it says find y if x is 4. That just means that I plug in 4 for x, so y equals 4 times 4 minus 7. I'm using this function that I have up here. So y equals 16 minus 7, or y equals 9. And so if I'm going to plot that on a graph, which is what we're going to be doing, I plot that as with an x value of 4, my y value is 9. And so the rest of these are just kind of plugging that in, 4 times negative 3 minus 7. However you need to do it, do the math. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, minus 7 is negative 19. So this would be the point negative 3, negative 19. Um, if I have a fraction, remember we already talked about how to work with fractions, and maybe you're comfortable with them as well. But I'm plugging in a half. It doesn't matter that it's a fraction. I still do the same stuff. Half of 4 is 2. 2 minus 7 is negative 5. So this would be the point. 1 half comma negative 5. And we already graphed points that were fractions or decimals when we did that, that Thanksgiving pumpkin. So that's not something you haven't ever seen before. Um, I would graph this as 0.5 between 1 and 2 and then go down 5 from there to put my point. All right, so we're going to put it together in um, our different types of functions. And so in this particular graph, when I plug in negative 2, I do 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. So that was 2 times negative 2 minus 3. Got negative 7, so that's what went in that spot. Then I do 2 times negative 1 minus 3. Negative 5. 2 times 0 minus 3. Negative 3. 2 times 1 minus 3. Uh, negative 1 and 2 times 2 minus 3, 1. And so then I plot that point as negative 2, negative 7. Left 2 down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The next one is negative 1, negative 5. Left 1 down, 5. 0, negative 3. Just down 3. 1, negative 1. Right 1 down 1. And 2, 1, right 2, up 1. And then when I connect those, I make my function, I form a line. Because that's a line, this is called a linear function. It's in the shape of a line. The x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. And that's somewhere between... Um, looks like 1 and 2. Uh, that's not real specific. Uh, I could approximate maybe like 1.9. It's real close to that. I guess it depends on how I draw my line. What is the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis? That's the point zero three. Are there any other special points? I don't see anything special on here. They're just a bunch of points that fall in a line. So why did we choose these x values? I guess I I chose them because they were in the middle of the graph. Are there any numbers that I couldn't have picked? No, you could pick anything. No, I can pick anything I want. Some functions, that's not the case. But in this function, I can pick anything I want. There's no x that's out of the way. Now, I probably wouldn't pick values like 100 for x because that's off of my graph, so I'm not even going to be seeing it. But Really, I could if I wanted to. So we're going to be doing this just for a couple more graphs. I think we got through, if I'm remembering correctly, yep, I know we got through two more. So I'm just going to run through those. If at any time you want to just, um, you know, like go ahead and work through it, that's basically what we're doing. We're, we're figuring out what the values are. So I, I plug in negative 1. This is absolute negative 1 minus 2 plus 1. Well, the absolute value makes that positive. So this would be negative 3, but the absolute value of that makes that positive 3 plus 1, or 4. So 4 goes there. If 
then I'd do the same thing, 0 minus 2 plus 1. Well, the absolute value of that makes that positive 2 plus 1, or 3. Um, then I'll do my next one. That's 1, one minus 2 plus 1. Absolute value of that makes that, that's negative 1. It makes it positive 1 plus 1, or 2. And then I do my next one. 2 minus 2 plus 1, well that's 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, and I'll do the last one, oops, i got to put that in there, um, 3 minus 2 plus 1, the absolute value of 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, so 2, so I'll plot those points, negative 1, 4, 0, 3, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2. Okay, so this looks like it goes in the shape of a V. What type of function is this? It's an absolute value, and it's in the shape of a V. What's the x-intercept? Where does it cross the x-axis? It doesn't, so there aren't any. What's the y-intercept? Where does it cross the y-axis? Well, that's at 0, 3. Are there any other special points? I think this vertex is a pretty nice special point. That's important. So that's the point 2, comma 1. I call that the vertex, but where the point comes, where it changes direction. That's a special point. Why did we choose these x values? Again, kind of middle of the graph. I like to pick a few points on each side. It also gave me surrounded the vertex. I didn't necessarily know that at first, but now I can see that. Are there any values I couldn't pick that shouldn't be picked? Nah, none. I could have done anything. Could pick any values that fall on this graph. I could have picked all of them if I wanted to. Some of them are going to get me more information than others. All right, so then the last one, we have to work through this square root. Remember that that's a square root. And a square root means I'm looking for two numbers that multiply by itself to get the number that's inside of there. I'm going to start with an easy one. What's the square root of 0? What number times itself equals 0? That's 0. Another easy one, 1. What number times itself gives me 1? 1. 1 times 1 is 1. What number times itself gives me 2? Eesh, I don't know. I can't think of 1. I'll come back to that. What number times itself gives me 4? What number times itself gives me 9? 3. Let's go back to this one. I don't maybe know exactly what that is, so I'll pull out my calculator and I turn it on and say the square root of 2. So I just hit the square root. I know it's kind of hard to see on that screen, but equals. comes out to 1.4142. This is roughly 1.4142. I'll plot it as about 1.4. Last one here. What number times itself equals negative 1? Well, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Positive 1 times positive 1 is positive 1. I don't have a value here. I can't get that. There is no value times itself that equals negative 1. So um, I have a restricted one. Remember what I was asking? Are there any numbers you shouldn't pick? This is a situation where... I shouldn't pick negative 1 because I can't find the square root of negative 1. But I'll plot my points 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 1.4, 4, 2, 3, 4, 2, and 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3. So here's my graph. This is a square root. What's the shape? Ugh, I don't even know. It's a curve. They said it was a half of a rainbow this morning. Kind of, I guess I can see that. I'll just call it a curve. What's the x-intercept? Crossed at 0, 0. What's the y-intercept? Also at 0, 0. What's another important point on there? Mm, somebody said earlier that it was this... Um, 
two comma 1.4 ish point that's kind of special because it's not normal but um, really other than that I don't know maybe the zero zero is the only real special one because that's kind of that end point of this graph everything else kind of works so why were these values selected again I picked them because middle of the graph just selected a bunch of value and most of them I selected perfect squares even though some of them weren't, I selected some pretty perfect squares. So that's why I would pick those. If it's a square root, I'm going to select points that are perfect squares. 1 was good, 4 was good, 9 was good, 2 was not good. What other values can't I pick? No negatives. So when you do your work tomorrow on your virtual, all you're going to be doing is um, kind of working through plotting points and then sketching a graph. So I hope this sound is a little bit better and uh, hope to see you soon.